Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode we're going to be talking about not the entire Beyond Amazing set, although we could almost freaking talk about it, I guess. And we're also going to talk about the free broadcast tournament that happened this last weekend. This is episode 454. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. LH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, and when you check out Cool Stuff Inc., just prepared to get your product when it's legally supposed to arrive. <laughs> yes, that is correct. And special guest in the studio, we have Ian Eggleston, Pickle Peggleston. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. Calder and I are currently in the same house, different rooms. Recording on two separate computers, the way podcasts were meant to be, Social facing distancing. opposite directions. Really cool. It's pretty, it's pretty Innovative. beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. But, all right, guys, let's uh, see to start off with what made you happy this last week, my man. We have a lot to talk about, so we can be pretty quick on the early on, because we got, we got a lot to go into this yeah. week. Um, not a, I don't have, like, a, I didn't have, like, a long, interesting week. Got a lot of random stuff done, uh, some birthdays and random dinners and stuff like that, but it all made me happy. Um, got some successful 3D prints, so, yeah, that's about it. Nice. Right oh, on. I, I beat Prey. Interesting. Oh, how's that? I'll say that. Um, definitely think like the the skill tree is like a choice in its in of itself that like can alter the ending apparently. So that'll be interesting if I play through it again. Not sure if I'll have time, but okay. Right on. Ian, what made you happy this last week, my man? We got to work on some very cool projects. We had our second week. At the venue in Omaha, that was pretty fun. I got to play the Super Friends in a 300 silver event, and I gave uh, the Chase Batman the utility belt and Green Lantern his ring, and that made them much, much more effective. So that was a lot of fun to add those on for free. But I'd say the thing that was the most fun was just getting the band together and filming some stuff that you will be seeing shortly, hopefully. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I have to agree. That is also what made me super happy this last week. It felt really good to film something on this biggest scale again. We haven't filmed like this since the Batch Rock video. And then also knowing that we'll be able to film like this more often, more regularly, and have really cool content for all you guys at home. Because, man, uh, this is like an, an instant favorite skit video. And I could just tell from its inception to like working on it. I was like, this is so good. This is so awesome. I loved every idea that everybody brought to the table. Uh, and I loved how we filmed it. And I have already seen it start to come together. And I'm like, I can't wait for all the viewers on YouTube, listeners to go check this thing out. I think as soon as people it was, see uh, it, it'll be their it was favorite our most of this year. Shoot by far. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We were, we were like a machine. It. Yo, so yeah. that was also really cool to just, uh, I don't know, kind of see the increase in like productivity we have. Like we we know what we're doing more so than the last few times. And so it just, uh, you know, just getting better at something like this is a lot of fun. So that that's really cool. Absolutely. Also, shout out to the overhead light. That made me unreasonably happy oh. when we got that. That was so cool. Yeah. New overhead <laughs> just, light, guys. So uh Hopefully the quality is uh, noticeably better, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, let's jump into some Beyond Amazing Talk. So, guys, uh, it's not very often we have majority of the set spoiled before Scott Porter's unboxing video goes live, but here we are. Uh, for those unaware who are listening to this podcast, if you haven't seen everything on Facebook or have seen the uh, unit sections in Clicks Nexus and HC Realms be filled out kind of early, oddly early, you could say for a set, it's because a seller on eBay ha got all the product in early, maybe just normal amount of time for most venues, but then broke street date and is just selling like all of the figures on eBay and with that, we now have the dial information for almost 
every character in the set or very quickly getting it filled out. I mean, almost all the chases by yeah. now have Several been found out or missing a handful. Um, a lot of the super rares, obviously the stuff you would sell on eBay is getting pretty filled out. So yeah, it's not a cool way to learn about the set. I'd no. say pretty lame actually. But here we are. We still have the knowledge and information uh, that that comes with. So we were going to talk about... Well, first off, what do you guys think about this whole situation? What are your guys' like thoughts on it? I'm, I'm not huge on it. I think it's more fun to have everything kind of leak out slowly. Like, I know when, when a big figure is previewed or when there's a new Scott Porter unboxing, I really like to take my time and, like, be thorough with what I'm looking at because, you know, it's a smaller dose, right? So you kind of take it in a little more, just a little more in general, and you appreciate things more, I think. But when, like, an entire set gets dumped and it's like, oh, here's, like, seven or eight super rares and, you know, ten rares and, you know, commons, uncommons, whatever... I feel like you don't look at the set as closely, like you just don't appreciate like the smaller things as much. And it, you know, it's just not as fun, you know, waiting for unboxing videos yeah. from other channels, like, and then also our own unboxing, we'll know most of what we're pulling now. And yeah, it just kind of kills the excitement. I, I think it's better in small doses and I, yeah, I just think you enjoy it more. So that's, that's my stance on it. I think it's lame. Yeah. I think obviously heavily biased because we do unboxings ourselves, so it'd be cool to be able yeah. to present something to people that, like, we haven't seen, they haven't seen, whatever, that's, like, brand new. Obviously, that is something that we usually hope for. Um, and I, I have seen people say that it's great that, like, people can have more time to see the full set and, like, make a decision on whether they want to buy it or whatever. But I don't think, like Ian said, I don't think people look at the full set when when like the whole thing is leaked, I think it's more likely that you'll see a, like a character that Scott pulled that you found interesting one day. And then the next day you'll be like, Oh, like there's that play at home kit. I really want like the carnage one. Uh, and then, you know, you'll pull like a chase and that'll get you like hype for that chase or maybe like the chase theme. I think when it's all dumped like this, it's kind of like, uh, what's the saying? Losing the forest through the trees or for the trees. I don't know. Something like that. It's it's something well, like no. that where it's just an overload and a lot of the stuff in the set's going to get just ignored. Like no one's going to, well, most people aren't going to look at every single dial. Yeah. Yeah, I, I miss that anticipation. It feels like these last couple of sets have been getting spoiled like earlier and earlier. Like it was Avengers Forever. Everybody got really early pre-releases. And so we saw that, which I, I don't totally hate that. That's fine. That was just like, yeah, that was at least whatever. like community involved. Yeah. A guy on eBay. Yeah. And I like think, Batman, uh, Amazon or something, let it get spoiled. And I was like, man, I kind of miss when I know for Captain America, anyways, going into pre release, there were still some figures we didn't know what they did yet in the set. And I really liked that. It was really cool. Um, so I do miss that really slow trickle of news that lets you build up hype over time. Because now when it feels like, okay, we know everything. Okay, whatever. All right, now I'm just waiting for the next set. You know, I like the the hype build up towards the set. I get to slowly enjoy it and care about it and figure out everything I want from the set, what I'm really liking for the set, or at least being surprised when I play the set for the first time. All of that is really cool. Just being like, oh, here's everything. Are you going to buy it or not buy it? Okay, you bought it. Okay, three months go by, nothing. Okay, here's everything. Like that's not a cool way for sets to come no. out, you know. So it's just it's a comparable to Empire, where like I think it was dang oh, yeah. near every chase yeah. got spoiled. And yeah, I remember right. when that popped up, I really took my time to like look through it because in my head, you know, the hero clicks addict I am, I'm going, Okay, well once I'm done looking at this, like, you know, that's that's the biggest firework, right? So it's, really it's over after this, and it was just, I mean, it was cool to see them, I guess, but it wasn't anywhere near as enjoyable as, like, you know, watching an unboxing and being like, I wonder if he's going to get a new chase, you know, is there going to be anything new pulled, just everything. So, I'm yeah, I'm in the same boat, 100%. Like, watching Endgame, and it just, like, skips the first two hours, and it's like, oh, Cat picks up Mjolnir, Tony snaps, end movie, yeah. and it's like, oh, I need, I want build-up, I want, uh, like, what is this? You know, like the payoff is cool. It's still great, but like, 
the buildup is what makes it cooler and greater. Uh, but yeah, listeners, write in. Feel free to message us, Style H for HeroClix, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, our email. Let us know your thoughts, how you feel about the way you like a set to get spoiled, the way you don't like a set to get spoiled. If you're cool with this, if you're just like, hey, information's information. I'm glad I've got it, and I can make an informed decision when I buy. Or if you're more into the, the showmanship kind of side of getting a set spoiled with unboxings and whatnot. But yeah, let us know, listeners, about your thoughts on this situation. But regardless of all of that, let's go ahead. We're just going to talk about two figures because we'll probably be able to do a set review pretty soon. Uh, we're just going to talk about two figures that have been spoiled. That, you know, kind of caught our eye. So, uh, Ian, you're the guest. Why don't you start us off with your first pick? Sure. Uh, the first figure that I wanted to talk about that I think is really, really cool is the super rare Dr. Octopus. And so he's got a full dial of like sidestep, precision strike, mastermind, and then a special or leadership alternates towards the end. 10 clicks of life. He does get pretty weak at the end, but I mean, I don't know how much his dial is really going to matter when he gets to start the game with four Ock arm bystanders, which is so cool. He has passenger four, but only to carry the Ock arms. And then he has power generate four Ock arm bystanders. It's all a max of four. But basically, this guy is going to be surrounded by Ock arms. He also has a rally ability on an opposing six where he can remove the die to generate an arm bystander or choose an Ock arm bystander and it makes an attack. These bystanders are pretty nasty too. They're zero movement, but they have 11 attack quake, invuln with 17 and three damage. So this guy's carrying up a whole squad of arms, and then he has Empower, Leadership, and Perplex to go with it. So these arms are more than likely going to be 11 for 4. And this, to me, is like, I don't, I don't think there's ever been anywhere near as cool of a Doc Ock as this. And I just, I'm so excited to play him. He seems like he's going to be a ton of fun. Maybe, maybe make him work in competitive. I, I'm going to doubt it, because he can just outwit his mastermind and might be toast but i really want to play this guy he's available at 100 or 50 points so you've got some flexibility if you want to play more of the sinister syndicate with him and yeah i mean the bystander generation i love figures that do that and this is such a cool and character accurate way to do it so he right now i think is the, the most excited figure or exciting figure in the set for me absolutely yeah he's definitely a very cool version of doc Ock. we haven't quite seen his arms utilized in this kind of way um they also have the arms have giant reach three so even though they have to be oh, adjacent yeah. to him yeah that increases his swing capability quite a decent amount yeah i know i was getting really excited for this guy when we were talking with scott back in worlds and he mentioned like this dr octopus and i was like "Ooh, that sounds awesome you know and so like finally seeing it ah oh, dude it's so dope they killed it with him yeah excellent excellent absolutely. flavor Great design, and I mean, I love Spider-Man. I love the Sinister Syndicate, so yeah, there's a lot of fun people to play him with, too, so really, really cool. Great job on this one. I will say they rarely design a bad Dr. Octopus. Even, like, Earth-X, who wasn't, like, crazy good, he was still really solid and had a yeah. lot of flavor with yeah. that Dr. Octopus, too. It's a good utility piece, for sure. Yeah, like the LE with all the free attacks and whatnot. Like, they just... They kind of they kind of don't miss with old Doc Ock, you know. Uh, Simeon, uh, who's your first figure you wanted to talk about? Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, Bombastic Bagman. He's a rare from the set, Ooh. number zero three four. He's got two point lines, seventy five and thirty five. Um, the thirty five point line starts on click four. He has seven clicks total, so he's got two traits and a special defense power. Otherwise, his top dial is the first four clicks is charge with super strength. Um, mostly super senses the whole dial, as most Spider-Man characters in this set will have. And then uh, I assume he has shape change because he has the bag on his head, so you can't really tell who he is. He could be anyone. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you don't know, this is Peter Parker when he did like the alternate costume for the Fantastic Four or whatever didn't have like a mask to match i guess i don't know uh but yeah his first trait is a rally four and it's green so it's all attack rolls it is free remove one of bombastic bombastic bagman's rally die 
If you do, until your next turn, Bombastic Bagman has, when a friendly character within range is KO'd, after resolutions, heal all friendly characters one click. I really like this. should be super easy to get these rally dice. And then if you are just, for instance, playing him with like that Doc Ock that Ian just talked about, um, at the end of any action, if Ock Arm is not adjacent to Dr. Octopus, you KO it. That would be a friendly character being KO'd. So if you activate this and then do something like that on your turn, you get to heal all friendly characters one click, which is just kind of nuts. Uh, I think it's a pretty useful power, especially with how many like lanterns and you know, just like the Medusa and the hair that we had in ABPI, there's a lot of bystanders that you can KO on your own team in fairly easy ways. So I really like that power. Uh, second trait is when establishing theme teams, characters on your starting force with the Fantastic Four keyword gain the Spider-Man family keyword. So Ooh. even though <laughs> Fantastic Four is Ooh. mostly rotated, uh, I think it's, I don't know. I don't know if it's all the way out or if it's on it, all of its way out, but um, at, at the very least in like Silver Age, you have Fantastic Four swap that can also join the Spider-Man family, uh, which is pretty wild. But I mean, the legacy Lockjaw can now yep. give Mastermind to people with Spider-Man, which is, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, is that is a good point. Um, there's a lot of really good Fantastic Four keyword pieces. Uh, but yeah, just yet another reason why collecting Spider-Man family characters is a good idea. Uh, obviously, they also benefit from being able to like wildcard the Spider-Man team ability if they have that now as well. But um, then his special defense power is on clicks three and seven. So he'll hit it twice if he's at 75 points or just once if he starts on click four. Uh, but that is stop super senses when Bombastic Bagman uses it and fails. After resolutions, you may deal damage to the attacker equal to the result. If Bombastic Bagman has four or more rally dice, the damage dealt is penetrating. I actually don't like this as much as... I mean, I just straight up don't like it as much as the original Bombastic Bagman. Um, because of, of the Spider-Man family fair. team ability, the Spider-Man team ability, uh, he'll succeed on a four through six. That means you'll at most unless they have like precision strike or something like that, you'll usually only be dealing three, maybe one, maybe two. Um, but you don't have to remove the rally dice to deal pen damage. So it is kind of just like a nice, like ah, I failed my super senses, but I have four rally dice. So I'm going to deal you like one or two pen damage or whatever it ends up being. But uh, bottom half of the dial, he's got perplex instead of shape change, and then he ends with like leap climb. But overall, average values for range. He's, I thought we were going to see some lower speed values, but top dial, he is a 10 speed charge. So he really doesn't dip off until like the bottom half. I like this one. He's pretty cool. I like that his defense powers for old times' sake, you know? It's like, yeah, the classic old school one. It's like maybe it's a reference to that. Like, hey, you know, for old times' sake. Do you some damage, you know? It's pretty right. fun. I'm going to talk about the uncommon shocker. I'm a, what can I say? I'm a big, big, big no abilities guy. So seeing shocker uh, in this set, I care about him more as a Marvel Snap reference than I ever would as a character, probably, <laughs> uh, only because he's got no abilities. So this shocker is pretty cool. He's a little simple, running shot, pen blast, all that stuff. But recently, my new favorite power in the world is Force Blast, because it's kind of freaking awesome. Uh, and gosh, they keep making figures with it, and they keep, uh, you know, they made knockback better. So it's just, yeah, Force Blast kicks butt now. So he has Red Rally 6 on opposing attack rolls. So free, remove one of Shocker's Rally Dice. If you do this turn, friendly characters with Sinister Syndicate team ability have the knockback key phrase, which is really dope. So now, ooh, all of your Sinister Syndicate people are going to be knocking people back, which is, you know, one extra damage, probably. And then his little Shocker gauntlets are this. So they give him Force Blast, so he always has it. And then if this character can use Force Blast, when they use it, they may also knock back each opposing character that was adjacent to the chosen character. Could potentially dish out kind of an insane amount of damage, which I'm 
very, very excited about. Uh, I love knockback. I love that he just keeps giving knockback. I wish the Shocker himself had Force Blast somewhere. He doesn't. He just has to rely on getting his Shocker Gauntlets. But besides that, man, he's really cool. He also is four targets with Triple Bolt with Pensai, which is like very, very nice for like a Sinister Syndicate, like tertiary attacker team for only 50 points. So I dig him. I think he's really fun and I can't wait to play him in my future Patriot decks. I mean, Sinister Syndicate theme teams. <laughs> he's also super good sealed pull as far as like, oh, yeah, slot. awesome sealed pull. Fit, like Destroys this, there's blocking, always one. Too? Oh. Yeah, there's always one that's 50 points running shot Pensai. Uh, obviously, its range is a little lower than you'd want it to be, but I think that's majority of the set is like four or five that's, range. They're they're balancing it out, right? This going forward, just lower ranges, lower speeds, and whatnot. I mean, that's still half the map. Yeah, four speed running shot. What that's is eight four squares. Yeah, that's, that's half yeah, the map go, reach. So. so it really isn't nothing crazy. When you put it in those terms, it's not crazy or not too bad. All right, Ian, you want to hit us with your next next pick? Yeah. When I saw this guy, I was like, okay, well, the prime slot. Oh, man. Green Lantern Batman might have to move to the side occasionally. The the figure, I think, that even is above Dr. Octopus that I'm excited for so far is the uh, prime rare 043B Spider-Man. He's in his uh, symbiote costume, so it's the all-black suit. And this guy just looks like an absolute monster. He can be played at 80 or 50 points. He's an 8-click dial or a 5-click dial, respectively. And he kicks things off with a trait that gives him Leap Climb. I know every Hero Clicks player's favorite power. So, boom, right off the bat. <laughs> and then he also has Free. Place this character in a square of different elevation within four squares in line of fire. So just some free mobility. You know, if you have the right map, hop up on some elevated for him. Or with the new terrain you can place, I'm sure you can get great use out of this. So some extra reach. He also has Subconscious Crime Fighting, which is another trait that gives him free. If Spider-Man has two action tokens, give him a costed action as free. If you did, after resolutions, deal Spider-Man one unavoidable damage. So Colossal Stamina was removed from the game a couple years back, and here it is back again on the Symbiote Spider-Man. So he just gets to keep going if he wants to. He's also got a move ability, which gives him Charge, Flurry, and Sidestep. So this guy... At sidestep, free place within four, and then a five square charge flurry. So, more than likely, this Spider Man is getting where he needs to be, and he's dishing some damage with 10, 11, 18, 4 on his top click. And then he also has a special defense power that he starts with, which is super senses and impervious protected out with. So, he has the Spider Man team ability as well, making him four through six, the impervious roll on top of that, and then whatever you equip him with, man. This guy is going to be hard to deal with. He's going to punch hard, and he's not going to go down super easy either. So, man, I love this. The insane mobility of Spider-Man and, you know, just the strength of, like, Venom here. Like, I want a Venom dial like this. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that at? But, yeah, I, I love this guy. Great keywords, too. He's got Avengers, Scientist, Spider-Man family. That doesn't matter as much these days, but, you know, still good to see. So yeah, super excited for this one. If I pull a prime so far, this is the one I want. It's so cool. When Scott showed off the um, the symbiotes today, the Venom one, uh, it's qualifying name is Venom, qualifying keyword is symbiote. So Spider-Man could start with this, and it's steel energy stealth. When this character uses steel energy, if a hit character is KO'd during the attack, heal two clicks instead. So he could also use that. Uh, but yeah, his bottom Ooh. dial's hard to deal with. Flurry with steel energy's always been pretty crazy. And yeah, never having to clear action tokens if you don't want to. Just That sounds like a lot of fun. This looks like a, a close combat oriented version of Punisher War Machine. <laughs> I'm all for <laughs> yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, it feels just like how you want a Spider-Man in the symbiote to feel. I do wish it's like his speed powers amid the chaos. There comes a costume, which is obviously straight out of Secret Wars. Now, that really makes me wish that his a appearance wasn't the Amazing Spider-Man 300 2023, which I get why <laughs> yeah. that makes sense. It's also when he has it, but that's not his technical first appearance, especially with the reference amid the chaos. There comes a costume. So I don't know. I was, I was a little hopeful. What could I say? But yeah, I don't know. He's really cool. I think solid pick. Uh, let's go with the other rare prime, 
because that one's so good. Um, so this, I picked this one specifically to talk about because it's just the most comic accurate version I think we've ever gotten. So this is Wilson Fisk. He's got the Brute Hydra Power Elite and Sinister Syndicate keywords with the Sinister Syndicate team ability, zero range, uh, which makes sense because he, you know, doesn't usually shoot people or anything like that. Um, so he comes in at 90 points, 65 points. Uh, the 65 point line starts on click four or 35 points, which starts on click seven out of a 10 clicked long dial total. Uh, so he has a full dial of super strength because, you know, it's all muscle and just looks like fat. So very accurate there. Be able to lift up a shipping crate if you wish. Uh, he's got outwit for the first seven clicks of his dial with three damage for the first four and then it goes down to two and then the last three clicks he gets exploit um has a special speed power for his entire dial that is charge flurry which that's what i usually think about when i think of the kingpin is just you know sprinting around super strong flurrying people uh he has a special damage power on clicks three six and ten so for 90 points 10 click long dial that special defense power is stop impervious when kingpin or the kingpin can reduce penetrating damage regeneration when the kingpin uses it and has no action tokens don't have the result so this is something i've always thought about the kingpin and wondered why whiz kids didn't do it is he's so much better at regenerating than wolverine and like Sabretooth and all these other lame characters that don't really have healing factors compared to wilson fisk so i'm glad that they have this regen don't have the result part and then also, um, they usually leave, like, impervious, can reduce penetrating damage for characters like Emperor Gladiator and Emperor Vulcan and these big cosmic pieces. But I've always thought, you know, uh, this Hawaiian shirt-wearing man is actually more more uh, in line with that kind of power. So I'm glad that this is three stop clicks. Uh, Emperor Gladiator, I think, only had two as a super rare prime, so I'm glad this one for 90 points, 10 points less, has three. Makes him a much more economical version, and obviously he's punching a lot harder than that Emperor Gladiator, so it's just comic accurate in that sense too. But uh, that's not all, because he also has a trait. This is my city. When the Kingpin hits a single opposing character, you may roll a d6. If you do, instead of dealing damage, knock back the hit character in a direction of your choice a number of squares equal to the result. If you knocked that character back into a square along the edge of the map, gain mission points equal to the number of squares they were knocked back. If they end the knockback in their starting area, gain one additional mission point. So you can choose to not deal damage, which, to be honest, he doesn't have the highest damage, but he does have flurry. Uh, so if you hit a single opposing character and you roll a six... You're potentially getting six mission points, potentially getting seven if you hit them into their starting area. So also just a better mission point piece than Ultron Infinity, which, I mean, I don't know if you saw What If, but Kingpin's obviously a bigger threat than Ultron Infinity. So again, way more comic accurate. I'm glad they went <laughs> with this direction with this piece. Um, I think this is just the definitive Wilson Fisk going forward. Like this is the one that like Matt Murdock would face off against and, you know, have a tough time, but maybe be able to overcome his uh, two clicks of invincible on clicks one and two, his two clicks of impervious on clicks four and five, his three clicks of invulnerability on clicks seven through nine. And then of course those three stop clicks with impervious that can reduce pen damage. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad we got this figure. I think it's necessary for the game. Wow, you sound uh, like the biggest Kingpin fan I know. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't take me for one, but obviously uh, Daredevil, the Netflix series, you know, that just really sold me on the character. And I, I'm glad that this, I mean, oh, this yeah. is like exactly how I would design a character based off of that series too. Like he does all of these, like I maybe I would have given him flight and leap climb to like help him move around a little bit more. Um, but but yeah, I think, yeah. you know, I'll obviously just equip him with something that does that instead. But uh, other than that, I think this perfectly encapsulates that version. You know, I really hate to say it, but he's really underpowered. I think they could have at least given him like regen as free yeah. or maybe when he has two tokens, regen as free. Because otherwise, I think you're just chewing straight, straight through this dial. That's um, true. 
Yeah. I, I do think like, that, like, obviously... The, the three stop clicks are okay. No traded I masterminds guess. kind of weird I, to go along with all of the other stuff. Like, he should have had two traits. One should have been, like, the, oh, the mission point thing, and then least. one should have just been, like, mastermind, generate henchmen. Um, probably, like, every turn, if you don't have a henchman, generate three henchmen. You know, something like that would have been fine. Oh, yeah. Even just starting the game with them or something. You know, just... He needs something to be better because he's just really weak at this yeah. at this point. You know, he only has three damage. I get he has super strength. Maybe you have a shipping container. Maybe that becomes a five. Maybe he is a 12 for five. Maybe. But I mean, a base? Yeah, it's just, it's just too situational. Yeah, way too situational. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> a, very, a very accurate kingpin. Yeah, so incredibly accurate. Most Some accurate Kingpin fan is just like probably of course. Kid, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's yeah. true. This is great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll I'll talk about Carnage Captain America, who really quick should have been called Captain Carnage. Yeah. Just saying. I don't know who is in charge of, of whatever, but uh the old Captain Venom is called Captain Venom. So it's weird this is Carnage Captain America, not just Captain Carnage. Uh, it's just kind of that's the vibe. That's the vibe it that I expected. So well, too. Exactly. Yeah, Captain Carnage would have way better than Carnage, Captain America. Yeah, Captain Carnage. But no, alas, here we are. I'll I'll nickname him that. I'll dub him that for sure. But let's get into it. He's 125 points at his top line. He's pretty cool. He can ignore characters for his line of fire. He's got a little four range. He has his special leader snip power, but I'm. Um, ability it's only on click one though at 125 points you even if you pay his i think he's like a 50 point line or something you will not get it but yeah the 50 point line he'll just have exploit and you will absolutely not get his leader snip so his leader snip is a is a primo primo ability here so what does he do what's leader snip huh well leadership when he uses it you may place the die on this card. If you do, this turn, when a friendly character with the symbiote keyword rolls for Blades, Claws, Fangs, before rolling, you may choose that their minimum result is equal to this die. If this die is used as the minimum result, or at the end of your turn, you remove the die. <laughs> remove? Typo on click. Rem remove. Yeah, remove. it's really funny. Yeah, yikes. So, that's pretty cool. You're like, oh, but he doesn't have... You know, blades anywhere. Don't worry. The Carnage Symbiote gives you blades, claws, fangs, and steel energy. He has the Symbiote keyword. All the Symbiote people will also have the Symbiote keyword, so that's also how you can give them blades. Also hundred swords we, in modern, so. Or also any sword, because we didn't have a million different ways to give people the power of blades, claws, fangs. How cool. Uh, I also like, so Let There Be Carnage is now more similar to the old venom trait so i wonder if the all the carnages going forward get let there be carnage and then all the venoms get the new uh venomized trait that we saw back in empire where it's like the plasticity super senses can't draw a lot of fire blah 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 blah. so his is plasticity shape change so i guess carnage gets shape change now even though it's been venom's power for the most part and venom is usually blue or black Carnage is normally red, so it's weird they didn't give the symbiotes uh, shape change back in Empire like normal and save maybe super senses for Carnage because he's red. But all right, whatever, I'll get past it. It's fine. Uh, and then also, when a friendly character the symbiote keyword KOs one or more opposing characters, after resolutions you heal Carnage Captain America one click, and you may heal past his starting line this way. So if you do make that fifty point investment, you only have to kill three people. It'll heal him all the way up to his uh, to his top click at 125 points, which is really cool. So the Let There Be Carnage trait is very strong. He gets some combat reflexes, regen on his last three clicks, scars and spikes forever, which is another great name. And then he has red and white and red and blue and red, which is just another great name, which gives him quake steel energy. And when he makes a close attack, he can choose an unoccupied square within his range and line of fire. And he can target an opposing character with the attack as if he also occupied that square. So it's really cool. He can quake uh, four squares out, which is fun. We've seen, I think, Age of Ultron, Captain America, the movie set one was able to do that. So it's cool to get that ability back. It's pretty fun, Captain America. Uh, after seeing the full set list, I'm a little bummed that I now have to get two chases from a set that I wasn't going to buy. Let me check. Any of. Uh, so that's increased I having to spend money, my budget now for Spider-Man went from $0 to, I guess, roughly about 200 for 
Carnage Cap and then a Gwen America. So that's fun. But Carnage Captain America is really cool. He's got a really sick sculpt that has the Carnage face on his shield. It can't you can't beat Captain Venom. You just can't, obviously. But this is a cool Carnage sculpt. Yeah. I think my favorite part about this um, Carnage Captain America is that at the 125 point line, um, my personal favorite character can absolutely dog on him for only 90 points. Um, because, right. you know, when I think of Captain America with a symbiote, especially like the Carnage symbiote, I, I really think of the Kingpin, how he would just like tear him apart easily. Uh, and so, yeah, that's my favorite part about this Carnage. Absolutely. For, for 35 points less. Well, that is the Beyond Amazing set so far, guys. What are you thinking? What, uh, oh. what are you guys looking to buy? How much? How much do you think it's going to be just based off this info um, for right now? We didn't go into legacy cards, but I mean, we obviously will do a full set review. Oh, yeah. I think legacy cards swayed me more than like the actual stuff in the set. So I think I'm going to get a case. Uh, I don't know if I feel like two cases, but I definitely like my odds with like a case getting two legacy cards. And really, I, I love their choices for those. So I'm not going to be too upset with whatever I get. But um, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm in the same boat. I think this is a case set for me. And I I love this set so far. The Sinister Syndicate's awesome. The Spider-Man that have been shown are also awesome. The themes are great. The Aguengers, I'm not, not huge on, so I'm hoping to pull Carnage Chases. But, I mean, that's not going to dissuade me. The Legacy cards are really cool. Some of them are borderline, should this have been made. <laughs> So yeah, this sets a sell for me. I'm I'm getting a case. How do we feel about a rare generic in Ooh. the form of the symbiote, the thirty point symbiotes? Oh, is I, that kind of supposed to be a generic? I don't know. I was kind of confused. It's real name but various. That, that so and like when it's KO'd, it Ooh, turns I guess into it is. Uh, the equipment. So it's yeah, I'm okay with a rare generic. Oh, it's fine. There's no question about that. Uh, we had we had cool. aim aim blues. You oh, know, aim blue squad. I mean, heck, blue. we had the scroll zombie, a chase generic. So yeah. nothing can be as <laughs> egregious uh, as something like that, you know, or even the uh, frost giant generics that yeah. were only in super boosters, Floor, Colossal, you know, so like a giant. rare generic. That's pretty. That's that's OK. There's no there's nothing wrong with that. That's had, true. Uh, definitely yeah. things that are wilder. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm not going to buy any of this set. I'm a hater. People know that. I hate Spider-Man. Can't stand him. Hate him in Heroclix. Hate him in everything. Uh, he needs to stay in his own world, stay in his own box. But uh, I will be forced to buy two chases at the very least. No, I'll probably pick up a lot of singles from this set. It's just like, you know, set's not doing much for me. Spider-Man's a popular character. He's not popular with me, though. Sorry, bro. It's, uh, it is what it is. Although, picking up some of the singles, they look really cool. I'm I'm down for singles. It's not it's no hate on set design or characters or well it is hate on characters that that actually is true. Um, but it's not a hate on like characters. set design or any choices that Wiz Kids made. It's just the choice that you made a Spider-Man set, which prints you money, just not my money. So that's okay. That's fine. I was hoping I was hoping seeing more of it would change my mind like Batman did, but it, it hasn't yet. I'm a, I'm an evil hater, and you can hate me, and that's allowed. But all right. Fantastic. That's Spider-Man. More on that next week when we probably do an entire set review, honestly, uh, at the rate that we're firing off since pre-release is happening. Oh, we'll probably have another podcast, maybe with all three of us again, to chat like pre-release and what we thought about that because that would be really fun. We do but have right, guys. Pre pre-release events coming up, so be sure to check out our YouTube. We'll be filming a bit on what we pull, what we play Maybe some matches if we can. We'll see about that. And we'll have some fun uh, pre-release content coming soon. So be sure to subscribe and check out the YouTube. Absolutely. Speaking of the YouTube, I live streamed all day this last Saturday for the free Heroclix Bradcast tournament that Brad Broyles did in his Discord. Simeon, yikes. Ian and I competed in that. And so yeah, let's just go ahead and dive into it. We had about... 40 players, 40-ish players, I believe. And Brad was like, it's free tournament. All the prizing is free. Ship it to you for free. It was amazing prizing. Stellar yeah. prizing. And then also, gosh, you could <laughs> uh, you could also win some just crazy stuff. Oh, all he asked, so like it was free, yeah. But all he asked was that, hey, if you wanted to do something, 
you donate money to some charities. The IPF was up there. Uh, There's like American Suicide Prevention uh, Foundation. There was Huntington's and all that stuff. They raised nine hundred dollars for charity, over nine hundred dollars for charity, which is incredible. So that was really awesome that a free tournament could do so much good. So we love that. We love seeing that. It was a stacked field. Ian, I know going into it, I wasn't excited to play Heroclix online. Um, and I just kind of built the team kind of quick on Wednesday when the builds were due. And I was like, I'm just going to lock in this. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, I'm going to have fun playing it. And I, that's kind of my mentality when I went into this tournament. Sorry, guys. Not really a 300 modern competitive guy. Even though I hold my own, I was just like, eh, winning and losing in a free tournament doesn't matter. So I'm not going to play like a total sweat lord because uh, there's no reason to do that. I don't know. What was your thoughts going into the tournament, Ian? You know, I was in a similar boat with you where I figured this event was going to take a while. It was five rounds and it's like, oh, five rounds online. Like, oof, this is going to be, it's going to be a day. But honestly, I ended up having a ton of fun. Like, it was, once you get in the swing of online, yeah, it's not the same thing, but it is still pretty fun. It was nice to meet everybody. And as far as build goes, I knew I wanted to play World's Finest. And so, prior to this, you know, like, hmm, I think a few weeks before all the new rules had rolled out, I was playing a pretty fun, like, 300 modern um, detective theme featuring Green Lantern Batman at full points and the Martian Manhunter team-up card, which gives your whole team outsiders. The only issue is that it had one prob on it, so yikes. And, uh, you know, the one-by-one starting area on smaller maps just really screws over the Green Lantern team ability, and I don't have a ton of sidestep either, so I had to completely scrap that. That's the team I wanted to play, but I was just not confident in it with the rule changes. Hmm. So... I went a bit of a lazier route, and I played World's Finest at 175 with the Necro Sword, and yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it sounds pretty gross. I like that. Uh, I played a team that I was more of a team in my style that I kind of want to play anyways, and that was a, a drop-off type team, an Alpha Strike drop-off team. I was going to play one that had like four chainsaw droppers, but then I realized that, wow, it's a pain in the butt to save all these images for constructs, and I hate it. So I dropped it down to two, and so my team ended up being three Captain Americas from Empire at 50 points. That's that's half my team right there is these three Captain Americas. The reason why, they have close combat expert and then free make a close attack, so they're an 11 for four. Combined with my boy, St. Walker, that makes him uh, 12 for five, so I'm... Going all the way across the map, and I'm dropping three 12 for fives in your face to make an attack, which is pretty awesome. Then we have Teen Lantern to give Flash, Green Lantern cores, prop, whatever. She can also drop a chainsaw because I'm giving her a ring, of course. And then we have Flash, who is, like I said, copying Green Lantern. He's got cloaks. We can move up. One of the caps also had Emo mod to modify defenses or give me whatever. Uh, St. Walker, like I said, the blue ring, the green ring for free, and then Molecule Man for just support, getting rid of barriers, getting rid of markers. He was actually huge today, He uh, or that day. He was massive in helping me out, honestly. So huge props to old Molecule Man. He's I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. Yikes. And then I had Cuckoo, who could either give me Perplex if I got on a long map and needed the extra Perplex for speed for Flash or for Prob. If I needed another prop, I never used any other choice. It was just perplex or prop. So pretty simple team. Just run up there, drop my caps. They make three attacks. Maybe drop a boot that knocks back, makes an attack, or maybe drop a chainsaw. I could in total make uh, seven attacks if I wanted to, or if flashes charge hit. I could make eight attacks in a turn for three actions, which is really cool. So that was fun. And I liked it a lot. But all right, let's go ahead. Let's jump into, we don't have to totally go in depth on all our games, but you want to just tell me your like winning record and then maybe like your most fun game you had and then maybe some issues you found out about your team and whatnot, Ian? Sure. Uh, I have a question for you though first okay. um, in regards to all this. With the new map changes, uh, if you win initiative, you either get to pick first uh, to, or pick to go first or you get to pick the map. When you were winning initiative, Calder, what were you picking? Yeah, so that was uh, that was the thing that really showed how out of practice I was with like competitive hero clicks and also not thinking about the whole map initiative thing. So I only won initiative twice all day, only won it twice. And 
majority of the time, I just wanted to choose map because I wanted it to be on a smaller map because uh, that means it's just easier for me to get around, right? So sure. I ended up going first a lot, though. I had a lot of people choose map. They wanted to go second. Be the biggest thing is this team is really cool. Like I said, it makes all these attacks, but I need space to put people to make attacks. So when people put me on a very heavy blocking terrain map, uh, it just means I can't really move my characters where I want them to be or get them as far across the map as I want them to be. You know, Flash flies, cool. He doesn't ignore blocking terrain for movement, doesn't have phasing. He So an indoor blocking map really hurts this team. So I always wanted to be able to choose the Teen Titans, like, beach, you know, Scooby-Doo beach map. If I, oh, sure. anytime I had the chance, you know, that was, that was for me in the whole new wonky, weird way of going first. So map choice is way better than going first for me, which is crazy for an Alpha Strike team. I was uh, I was kind of flip flopping throughout the day. Um, my team doesn't have full map reach on the long maps, so I I tried like uh, the first game I lost initiative, so um, he ended up going first. So I picked the map that was fine, and. I think I think I was pretty evenly split. I think I went first in two of my games and picked map in three. And I okay. honestly think I preferred picking map and going second because my team isn't exactly easy to KO. So it's like, okay, run over to me. Let's see what you can do. And then I'll go. And that seemed to work better than going first for me, for my team, which I didn't even go into fully. So my full team was World's Finest with the all black Necro Sword. So no super senses, no shape change when they're hitting. And when you have an 175-point figure, I just wanted to make sure they were hitting, so that was the reasoning. I had Sakarian Iron Man with the cloak, just, uh, you know, the best figure in modern, in my opinion, so put him on the team. I had Star Sapphire with a free Star Sapphire ring. She also has barrier on her dial, so I could throw up two barriers, turn one if I wanted to, you know, to kind of protect me a bit for when the opponent would run in and mess me up. And then I had the Commissioner, the one that makes the rookie pog, uh, with the Tesseract equip. And so I actually think the Tesseract is pretty dang good these days. Like with theme team probability control being gone, uh, getting an extra prob for moving, it came up a lot and it, it helped me out quite a bit. So uh, the Tesseract gained some favor from me this tournament. So that was my whole team. On the sideline, I had the Prime Destroyer because, you know, why not? Scrappy Doo, also because why not? If a detective dies, so. Commissioner, World's Finest, Scrappy can come in. I had the Chase Batman from uh, Batman Team Up and the Common Superman, because that's like the only option. Uh, because when World's Finest dies, you can split them apart and make uh, those two figures. And then I had some mystery cards as well that did not come up in like any of my games, so that does not matter. <laughs> that was my full team. Um, I'd say my favorite game of the day was Game 1 against Joe Safa. He's just one of my favorite people in the community. I just love Joe. And he's also a very, very strong player, a consistent top 16, top 8 player in major tournaments. And I was a bit scared going into this, but I ended up pulling out the win. I got a crazy amount of rollouts on my World's Finest. They do get a bonus on their Super Senses for each action token they have. So I, was, I had some opportunities for like 3 through 6 Senses. And then if somebody attacks, you get, they get to make a free attack. So there were so many points where I was free attacking with them, and when you have the Null Sword, Giant Reach 2, you're ignoring everything. You're pretty much KOing something every time they're punching. And so they would just chew through something. You know, my opponent would take their turn. Maybe I'd take some damage. I have a 50-50 chance of taking only one damage as well from their trait. It, uh, it was crazy. So that was a great first game. I ended up winning like 140 to, I think, like 100 and so I was happy to pull that win out World's Finest. I was surprised by I'm not going to lie. I thought they were going to die a lot easier. And then the other game that was just like, I mean, it was like a five-minute match that I wanted to highlight was I played against Division Prime, who has his trademark Super Sense shape change. You know, that's what his whole bread and butter. And World's Finest came over with the big old Null Sword and said, not today. So <laughs> that wasn't necessarily nice. fun, but it was like, this is why we brought the Necro Sword. So I felt good about that. But what about you, Calder? Yeah, I really liked all of my games I played in. Actually, I went in with that mindset. Like I said, win, lose, whatever. I'm going to have fun. And fun is what I had, you know? 
So yeah, my first game against Paul Cote, and all of this is uh, on my live stream. So if you guys, I'll try to keep this brief because it is actually out there. And you guys can all watch it along with me, like eating lunch and all sorts of other probably annoying things. Uh, but yeah, so first game, pretty fun. I got put on a map that was just not good for my team. And I was like, well, I know that's just it. And so that was basically it. I couldn't do correct alpha I wanted to. I didn't have space to place everybody. And so I had to just be like, all right, cool. Well, here's a first attack. Try to get some points. Didn't score any. Was able to get chip later and then just kind of ended up, you know, got got you know wrecked, you know. And then the rest of my games were all very fun. Uh, David, I also played against uh, Josafa. He's always great. I think I screwed up in my map choice. I should have went to the small map. I just saw he had a bunch of other alpha strike stuff. And I was like, well, I know I definitely have more reach than him so i took it to a longer map but it was robinson park and i did not think about the idea that he could just hide almost all of his characters up on elevated and i couldn't get to them and that was just miserable and i was like it's the smartest play he's a very strategic dude uh and i was like that sucks and so like i knew it's like as soon as i saw him move everything there i was like oh i'm not winning this game i i did myself in like i completely screwed this one botched it Ah, it's a botch job, you know? And I'm like, well, there you go. There you have it. That's the way it be, I suppose. Yeah. So that wasn't that wasn't amazing, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, after that, though, we played some really fun games. Probably the coolest one I played was against Xander. He was playing, I believe, yeah, it was Scarlet Witch. It was Batman Prime. Uh, Batman Prime at full points. And so we got to the small map, chose Respect. small map. Respect. He, he turned one. I like barrier up whatever just to prepare to be like, all right, I want to be able to go next turn and, you know, drop the drop the freedom bus on him. And he, yeah, turn one, he's able to get Scarlet Witch rune markering everybody in my starting area. And then also Batman with free smoke cloud and free place one to put down that smoke cloud and put it on plasticity to like effectively lock down my entire team. And I was like, dang, this sucks. And then Molecule Man does what he did best, and he was like, goodbye, Smoke Cloud, don't need that anymore. And I was able to carry enough people out of my start. I was able to carry everybody but Cuckoo. I almost left her there the entire game out of my starting area to kind of go back around him, behind him, and KO Batman. It was really tough. I had to outwit his special attack power in order to move the rest of my teams. Like the first was just getting Molecule Man out there for his outwit and then a little free attack with Captain America. And then finally I could outwit that to free up the rest of my team because man, we were not going to get out of there needing like a six on breakaway to do all this stuff. Like that would have just been a miserable, totally locked down, but I was able to make a comeback and it was the only game that went to time, but I won it. And it was, uh, it was, it was tough. It really, I had to put my thinking cap on and really think about everything I was doing. And that was another thing I wanted to highlight was, uh, for all people, no one should be afraid to make mistakes. Sometimes people make mistakes and that's okay. You don't have to gloss over them. You don't have to pretend they didn't happen. You don't have to try to be like, you're better than people. Oh, I don't make mistakes. Oh, I'm such a great player. Nope. The best players make mistakes. Literally the best ones all the time. Doesn't matter how good you are. You Sometimes make mistakes. Sometimes even on purpose. And that's okay. No, I, I, I genuinely, well, some people do it on purpose. Some people, you know, C-H-E-A-T on purpose. I won't lie. They definitely do. But at the very least in my games, I always made it a very big point where if someone in the chat said, oh, you made a mistake here or, oh, you cheated. I want you to know, I'll consider myself a cheater. Try not to be a cheater. If I made a mistake, I'm going to instantly tell everybody in the chat, oh, looks like I made a mistake. There's a point in me and Paul's game where I was like, ah, you know what? I think, like you said, like, oh, you can do this. And so like, I did that. I was like, you know, that didn't feel right. I don't, I don't think I should have been able to do something like that. And then yeah, I checked it and I was like, nope, sure enough, was not able to do that within the rules. And we found it out, made sure that was set on stream, made sure everybody knew because there's no reason to not be transparent with stuff like that. I wanted to make sure that when people watched it, there was like, it was all going to be fun games. None of the games were not going to be fun. And then it was all going to be very honest gameplay, which I think is what the community needs more than anything. So yeah. And that was the point of my whole team. Games are going to be really fast I win or really fast I lose. Mostly because I did not want to sit in front of my computer for that long. <laughs> kind of went on a tangent there. Very but, fair. 
I went, yeah, I had a fun time. I, but I also made sure I went in with the mentality that I was going to have a fun time and me winning or losing wasn't going to affect my mood because that's honestly uh, kind of lame. Even no matter what high level of competitive or low level of competitive, it is just a game. Yep. Yeah, there's a brick at Beyond Amazing. There's a case of Beyond Amazing on the line. That would have been dope. Absolutely. But like, I have no investment besides my time, I guess. So it's okay. You know, like, it's not like I paid $100 for a high price tournament. I'm going to be really upset that I lost. Uh, so, yeah, I think just uh, keeping that mentality going forward for any competitive, any online stuff. And, you know, we still, we both did really well. And, God, man, how hilarious was it that we almost played each other multiple times? Oh, we were so close. Like, pretty much the entire day, Calder and I, we lost the same rounds, ended yep. with the same record. Calder finished 10th. I finished 11th. And we had maybe like one to two people between us the entire tournament. Yeah, and it was it was hilarious. So I was just like, "Come on, come on!" Like, it would have been really good. Stream. I think it would have been funny. That would have been really good. Oh, if absolutely. You just point the camera down and like to shut off roll twenty, and you're just like, "Hey, Brad, we're just gonna play on this table real quick." <laughs> I just film that oh, instead. Yeah, that's next level. That'd be really next level. Especially since I didn't own majority of my team. Say, yeah. One of the you lose the one benefit of playing online, which is not having to own the figures. Right. I'd say uh the like the majority of the event the event was really fun. I really enjoyed it. And while I'm not the biggest fan of online, I'm definitely open to doing more online like tournaments. I I thought it was great. I think the general chat in between matches was a lot of fun. Just meeting new players who maybe hadn't like played competitively that much. I think that's another thing to touch on is I think a lot of people are really, really scared to play competitively because they build a team and they think like, oh, this gets beat by X, Y, and Z. I think you just have to throw that mentality off to the side. Find some characters you like that you know are a little stronger. And then just play them and see what happens. And you can have a lot of fun doing it. Like, you don't have to overthink things. You know, Calder and I are great examples of that. We both did pretty well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just give it a try. You might like competitive more than you think. I, you know, it's not exactly my cup of tea, but I don't, like, hate it. I enjoy playing it. I enjoy, yeah. like, testing some new stuff out. But it's not, like, what I want to do every week. I'd much rather play casually. But I think people... Just give it a try. Give it a chance, you know? And it's really great to try online because, number one, you no longer have the – I'm not going to call it necessarily an excuse, but a lot of people say, oh, competitive is too expensive, blah, you know, this, that, and the other thing. You know, if I'm going to lose to Scarlet Witch, Prime, Destroyer or something, you know, I can't even afford that team. Well, online, you all have that. Totally even playing field online. Plus, if you do play in a Brad event and you maybe you've never played competitively online before uh, – before, yikes – it's free. Brad's Friday events, I believe they're on Fridays, are all free until you place in his event. So that's like top one, two, or three. So until you get like top three in any of his events, which by the way, uh, are all cash payouts. So if you play your first game for free uh, and then you get third place even, you just get 10 bucks back. And then it's $10 going forward. So now you're like, oh, I'm up $10, which means the next time I pay or play is also free. You know, if that's this, if you win. So let's just say, you know, I play for free a few times. Maybe you don't win. Maybe you do. Oh, hey, I won. I got some money back. You just give that money right back to Brad. Keep playing. Maybe even make some money. It's pretty cool. So, like, his cash bash tournaments are amazing for free players because, or free players, for new players because you get to play for free. You get the access of every Hero Clicks map or figure at your fingertips. And it's, it's a very non committal thing. At the end of the day, it, it's just, okay, three hours. That's all it was. I played competitive for like three hours, maybe more than that if you, you know, practiced, assembled your team, reworked your team, whatever. But give it a shot. I'm Sam boat as Ian. I don't consider myself a competitive player. That doesn't mean, I guess we're not good. I don't want to sound full of myself, but like me and Ian and Simeon, we've all done very well in events. We've all won states events or WKOs for areas around here or other areas, honestly. So we all do pretty, we're all pretty dang good at Hero Clicks, not to like toot our own horn, but we don't consider ourselves competitive players and we still have fun playing competitive. It's not yeah, necessarily I mean, for everybody, but there's aspects of it that you can definitely enjoy. Podcast wise, I think we were the highest placing podcast in the Bradcast event. 
that was pretty cool you know like <laughs> we don't just talk the talk but we kind of walk the walk and we don't even call ourselves a competitive podcast and we did better than some people that do <laughs> also what did you end up walking away with calder what was the prizing that you oh saw? yeah this is this is the the fun part uh all the cool prize drafting so being 10th i was like okay i need to just get my like top 10 listed out really top eight because i was like okay i don't need to worry about getting a beyond amazing breaker case that's going to go to first second third whatever uh, i ended up going with the squadron supreme set so this is a full set of the super rares and their prime counterparts of the squadron sinister slash squadron supreme that came out years and years ago but like figures i was never able to get i really like the squadrons like supreme they're really cool i liked nighthawk mostly because he appears in like other stories that isn't just with the squadron and i really liked the only prime i was ever able to get was like power princess and dr light i want to say from guardians of the galaxy but like the one that was impossible is like king hyperion yeah right? he, he was he was oh. like so yeah, expensive from, from the iron Man. Iron crazy Man, yeah. expensive yeah so yeah i got a full set of the squadron supreme it was also really funny because simeon Ha- was kind of trying to buy that from Brad for a while <laughs> and was like shooting him offers and Brad was like shooting him down and so I was like how funny would it be if I got the Squadron Supreme and I did so it's really hilarious to me and I can't wait to display them in our new studio but would you end up walking away with Ian? I ended up choosing it was kind of for me I wanted the Plastic Man lot but I think that went like 8th or ninth, and I was like oh dang it because I have Plastic yeah. Man I don't have any of the objects but uh, that's okay uh, it came down to me, I was like, okay, Phoenix Sentinel or three Wendigos and Titano. And I figured it's like, ah, I can pick up a Phoenix Sentinel if I really want to get one. So I ended up picking the three Wendigos and Titano because if Silver ever takes off and I want to play in that, I think Wendigo is a pretty decent starting point. Like, that figure is disgusting. Uh, I used to have a couple back in the day I sold them. So getting those back, I was like, that's pretty cool. So that's why I ended up choosing. And, you know, if I play in silver... So now you only need uh, seven more. Yeah, ten to go. He's got, like, what, three Wendigos? Yeah, you need the ten to go. So I'm currently in the market for seven more Wendigos. <laughs> Good no, deal. I, don't, I know thing. what I have, that's slash, I know what I want. That's true. But yeah, overall... Ooh, one more thing about prizing I wanted to mention. At the top of the prizing list, Brad had... Tippy Toe listed, a common from Deadpool and the X-Force, just a little squirrel. And, you know, who's going to pick that? The person who ended up picking that, what did they get, Calder? <laughs> In addition to Tippy Toe, who is already hot ticket item, they got Sakarian Iron Man Chase from Disney+. Plus. So, wow. Wow. Ooh, hidden, hidden prizing. I really liked that. I yeah. thought that was really cool. Stealth prizing. Because that, yeah, that would probably go, like, last or, like, close to last. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't remember who ended up walking away with it, but when I found that out, that was like, oh, man, Brad. Excellent. It's a really cool awesome. thing to do. Yeah. It's, it's very much the, uh, do you want what's in this briefcase or do you want this whatever thing or something like that? You know, it's very uh, a deal or no deal almost thing. Totally secretive. Ooh. So, yeah, that was pretty much the Bradcast event. It was a lot of fun. I'd do it again, and we will be doing it again. The IPS right. is coming up soon. We'll have some more details on that uh, this week, actually. I'm still talking with Brad about setting up the entirety of it, but stay tuned for that. We'd love to have you come play in it. It'll be for charity. It'll be for a lot of fun, too. So, you know, consider that. And, yeah, stay tuned to the Dial H page and the IPF Facebook page as well. Absolutely. That'll be a fun time. Hopefully we kind of sold you on these events. Don't be too scared of uh, 300 Modern. And if you're like, oh, it's not really for me, maybe just try kind of doing what I do. Just build around your favorite character. I'm lucky enough that, yeah, they have a Captain America that makes a free attack and I can carry him across the map. Okay, fair. Um, But he's still not meta, you know, not normally. He's not on people's radars. So, you know, just maybe try to choose your favorite character. Unless your favorite character is like, I don't know the thing or something you should be able to make a pretty meta team out of it maybe maybe not i know ian's also kind of lucky his favorite character is batman made a pretty good batman (laughs) yeah they so they made an absurd batman and then they did another one and kind of another one too so yeah the next few years i think batman 
Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so when is that event again, Ian, for the IPF? So the IPF event online will be April 1st. It's a Saturday, and then we are still working out the exact timing of that. It will start earlier in the day, earlier in the afternoon. But I'm just currently going back and forth with Brad a bit because he's going to be our judge. So I really want to make sure we're accommodating his time. But we will have more information posted about that. Uh, we'll probably do a video on it as well. We'll get the word out. Don't worry about it. You'll see it if you're on Facebook. Right on. Well, it looks like we can go ahead and move on to the part of the show where we answer, ooh, ah, some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! We have a handful of questions. Some of them are, I guess, a little defunct with seeing more Spider-Man literally two days after the question was made. I think a day after it, we, we got a lot of Spider-Man because Bill asked, uh, will 031 Morbius have a power called It's Morbin Time? Call your shot. Didn't need to call our shot. He has a power called It's Morbius's Time, which is probably the closest WizKids was allowed to uh, to get with that because Marvel probably... Trademarked? What? Is, is Morbin Time trademarked? I don't, I don't know, but, but I don't know if Marvel wants them to say the word Morbin Time because it's yeah. not like a real thing. That's just like the meme. You I know? imagine that they definitely made the conscious choice not to do the exact phrase that was like the meme. They went like as close to it without like maybe offending Marvel or something. Who knows? Yeah, you because know, like because the joke is nobody saw Morbius. You know, like no one actually saw Morbius. So it's like, wow, it's so cool when he said it's Morbin Time. You know. Yeah, true. The whole joke is based off the fact that no one saw that movie, uh, which maybe Marvel wouldn't be a big fan of. I don't know. I saw it eight times in theaters. I don't know about you. I thought it was a great movie. That was a lie. Uh, Tyler then said to piggyback off that question, we just love piggybacking. He said, will we get a variety of different color Morbiuses, Morbus, Morbusi, not Morbiuses, to make the, the mighty Morbin Rangers? No, but you are allowed to paint your hero clicks, and they are still tournament legal. So if you want to get... As many of, I think he's rare, the rare Morbius as possible. I don't think he's unique. Paint him, you know, the Power Rangers colors. You could have the Mighty Morbin Rangers. I would love to see someone do that. That would be hilarious. Yeah, that would be really solid. Uh, but a question that we can actually kind of have a little bit of discussion on that hasn't been spoiled yet, because it's likely not to get spoiled. Uh, Luke asks, so we have a leak. The chase set theme is Let Them Eat Carnage. Well, one of them is anyways. Who are some real life people, past or present, that would absolutely be wrong choice for Carnage amized versions? He says maybe Rosie O'Donnell shooting Carnage Kush balls comes to mind. Uh, I think a terrible choice for Carnageized version is Gandhi. I think it would be hilarious if he was Carnageized. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be funny. But you guys, who would be a terrible choice to have the Carnage symbiote? Oh, uh... man. I mean, if you gave it to, like, Michael Jackson, that'd be just really strange. <laughs> he kind of rocks red and black, so it's kind of fitting. King of, king of Pop, the King of Carnage. It's just, like, I don't know, not very tasteful, so maybe <laughs> maybe that. I mean, yeah, he's also dead, so we'd have to give it to him while he's still alive. Is he? Michael Jackson? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. He said old past or present. Just saying. Did he die? Uh, yesterday, I believe. I'm messing with you, bro. I, I know it was like, we can cut that if we want to. <laughs> I, was, I just wanted to. No, that was some high anybody. top humor. That's that'll stay. Yeah. all of this. Stuff. Oh, that... uh, I don't, I don't know who I would give a carnageized version to. Um, I want to like just like go with like a president or something. Uh, mm. I'll go with my terrible ex governor Pete Ricketts because. At least it would hide his hideous bald head. So we'll go with that. Also, Peter, his, I think he already wants project. to eat the poor. So, I mean, there's that. Ooh. Dude, Ooh, there now he go. could just do Carnage it like, with impunity. All about eating people. Yeah. Ooh, what about a Carnage Kevin Hart? <laughs> Dang. Well, that one couldn't be colossal. What that about one a specifically man, can't be colossal Carnage. A tiny size <laughs> Carnage? I think... Uh, like the green I monster, but red... Play. Kevin Hart as Carnage would be excellent. I think it's just the perfect casting. If they ever do it again, I think Kevin Hart is number one for Carnage yeah. casting. Easily. He's not on your short list for, I don't know who is, because that just doesn't even make sense. Mm. The girl from Twilight, what's her name? Kristen Stewart? Kristen oh, Stewart. yeah. Good Carnage. Yeah. 
You think so? A lot of emotion. Does he has big he has emotional. a big mouth? He breathes through his mouth a lot. I guess she would fit. Be actually probably a scarier carnage because you wouldn't know the intentions or like what it was, like what was going on. You're like, is it Ooh, angry? You're right. is, it, is it gonna attack me? It's just standing there and just breathing heavily. Specifically, like the Twilight one. I know she's been in other things. I just don't watch those things. Yeah, but that's that's all anybody knows her for, though. Ooh. Here we go. Here we go. A Carnage Stephen Hawking. There we go. Final answer. Oh. <laughs> Oof. A, dude, imagine that. Is like he still talks the same way with like his keyboard, but his chair is like carnaged out too. That'd be pretty cool. So not like Ghost Rider, but just like gooey wheels. Gooey wheels. Yeah. Instead of like, the tray. Yeah. Instead I've of got some gooey wheels. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Amazing. We have a little bit of time. The episode, I don't know what it's running at right now, but would you guys be down for some bad Samaritan since it's been a minute? Yeah. I'm real sorry about what you, uh, you know. Maybe I'll keep my eye out for another one. I don't want no pity. Just treat me equal and no, nobody's taking nothing from me ever again. All right, let's play some Bad Sam. It's been a minute since we played on the show, so let me run down the rules for all the new listeners or people that just don't remember. Bad Sam is a hero clicks guessing game. It takes place in three rounds with three figures. So in the first round, we got figure number one, and you will get one clue for figure number one. Round two, you get a second clue for figure number one. And round three, you get a third clue for figure number one. And if you can't guess it, at the end of any of those rounds, then I will get a point. If you're able to guess it on the first round, you will get six points. Sorry, you'll get, yeah, you'll get six points. Guess it on the second round, you get four points, and you guess it on the last round, you will get one point. And we do that three times, or actually four times, for all the figures. Then on the, the very last figure, so the first year, you're all going to be modern age, so that's easy. The last one is going to be golden age with easier clues. We have a random number generator with clues one through 20. Once I give you guys the clue, listener, feel free to pause the podcast, uh, formulate your own guess, and then play it to hear Ian and Simeon's guesses and see if uh, see if you're right, see if you're wrong. Maybe their guesses will help you figure out your guess. You never know. I won't tell you how to play, but that is how Bad Sam is played. So figure number one, round one, clue one. And got a number one eight. through 20. Number eight. Uh, number eight is my favorite, which is we get to read an HC Realms comment. Perfect. Wow. I will give you the names of the HC Realms commenters, and you guys will tell me whose comment you want to read. So, Pokolo, Bat Cow, Hujibo, and Super Clixer. Whose comments do you want to read? Good old Hujibo, good old Super Clixer. I don't know. Do we want to go with a known quantity, Ian, or do we want to take a risk on one of these others? I think Hujibo is good. Okay, we'll go okay. Hujibo. Hujibo, when he hits any number of characters, he gets a token. Is that a reply to something? It must be, but he did not quote the reply, so that is the full comments from Hujibo. When he hits any number of characters, he gets an action token? He gets a token. He gets a token. Oh, okay. Um, I was thinking action token, uh, okay, yeah. Um, gets to- somebody that hits and gets an action token. Or like a special token. Doom 2099, does he do... No, he's got plot points. He wouldn't get tokens. Um, Who gets a token? I'm going to go with uh, the false hope token guy from Future Foundation who is called... Uh, not Griever. Gosh, what was that? The Destroyer? The... Uh, the let's see. It's like Doom's mentor. Um... <laughs> I know who you mean. You're really close to what the name is. Yeah, it's like, uh, da, 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 da. it's something. Um, I know Griever's in that set, and then this guy, I, I always get mixed up with it because he's got like some sort of title. Oh, uh, it's the Marquis of Death. That's right. There you go. Because it's like okay. the time sounding. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Person. So Simeon's, okay, one for the Marquis of Death. Uh. I'm really drawing a blank on who gets tokens when they hit. I think there's like I think there's a Hulk who does, so I'll say Hulk. Okay. Marquee of Death, one for Hulk. It is gonna be <laughs> Neither one of those figures. We need a second clue on figure number one. Seven. Ooh. Seven is a generic keyword. This character is a scientist. 
Well, that narrows it down. <laughs> a scientist gets a token. They make a lot of tokens, so I should know this. Mm. Oh, man. It's a token on hit. He's a scientist. Emperor Gladiator? No, he wouldn't be a scientist. But he definitely That's gets a, good, a token. He, has, he gets confidence. He's been taking, uh, been taking some you know, online courses. Community college or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's biology degree. Scientist of the she art. Um, yeah. Those guys have cosmic, though, not scientist. Uh, man, who is a scientist? Uh, a scientist who gets a token. That boy. <laughs> also, who did say he, I play, so I don't think. We, can, we can get rid of all the female scientists that could have been referred to. Um not that that narrows it down at all for me. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Doom. I don't think it's Doom, but okay, I'm going with it. Or Pretty Doctor, safe call, Doctor Doom. I will say, not just Doom. Yeah, <laughs> it's a different person, so it's a good thing you clarified. I'll say Mr. Fantastic. Okay, it's actually do Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> it's neither of those, so we are on clue number three, the first figure, the final clue. Ten. Ten is going to be name of a special power. This character doesn't have any special powers. Mm. Traded up. Um, that makes me want to go back to my original thought of the title character, like Doom Twenty Ninety Nine. But uh, I don't know if he'd even be a scientist. Scientist. It's a token. <sighs> a scientist that gets a token, no special powers, so it's only a trait that's giving them a token. Um. Who would have been a scientist in the last couple sets? Batman team up. It's probably like the chief. Uh, I don't know if he's a scientist. Um, also, he has multiple special powers, so it's not him. Oh, dude, I, re I really got nothing here. <laughs> uh, uh, Spider-Man, final answer. Okay. Spider-Man. Uh, I'll go with somebody that came out somewhat recently i guess um kang is kang i have him on my my desk i don't have his card but kang the conqueror i'll go with that he's probably a scientist okay it's gonna be spider-man kang the conqueror it is it is actually kang the conqueror simeon you you got it well it's definitely not the one i'm looking at then because he has a special power no style. <laughs> This is the legacy card, uh, King the Conqueror. As soon as uh, I picked where it up, I, I was like, tell well, you guys, I'm there wrong. is indeed a theme for this Bat Samaritan. Mm. All right, so Simeon, Simeon's up a point. That's just barely. I tried to time. try to get through that round without giving him up, but uh, Simeon got it. Okay. Figure number two, clue number one. Okay. We got eight again. <sighs> yeah, baby. HC Realms comments. Uh, let me read off the comments for you guys. We have one from Mule0017, one from Hellboy the Bellboy, Ooh. and one from Goop. Goop? Goop, you oh, say? Um, <laughs> do we have Goop's fanboy that follows them around, apparently? We don't have Goop's fanboy. I, I forget I don't that person's either. name. What an odd interaction. Is, was, it, was it Mule? Was that his uh... fanboy? Can't even it's not Hellboy the Bellboy. I know that. Him. It's not him. Um, I would like to, just like in real life, I would like to avoid goop on this one. Um, yeah. So our All other right. options were Mule and Hellboy the Bellboy. Yes. You're picked, I mean, I picked the last one. I'll go with Hellboy the Bellboy. I think they've been around okay. for a while. Hellboy the Boy Bellboy says, Woo-wee! I'll definitely be giving her the Stones of Merlin to maximize her tankiness. Okay. I may have put more inflection on his ooh wee, but he, he has ooh wee so, as <laughs> the word he says in his comment. We narrowed it down to a lady character and. Who's tank? Yeah, like Stones of Merlin, so they probably don't already have Invincible because that's what that gives them. Um, I will go with Saturnine, the mastermind okay. lady. See me see Saturnine? What was that, Ian? I'll do She Hulk. Milk. <laughs> gonna be neither of those. Blue number two. Figure number two. Twenty. 
20 is any two clues. Well, I shouldn't say any, but you get two clues for free, so roll it again. And this will be your first clue you get for free. 15? Uh, 15 is going to tell you the opening defense power. This character has invulnerability. And then roll it one more time. And 17. 17 is going to give you a free play. So choose any clue that you want. Oh. A reminder of the clues. Significant appearance. Point value set. Number of clicks. A rarity and set number. Named keyword. Generic keyword. HC Realms comment. Top dial stats slash team ability. Name of a special power. Name of a trait. Any special combat symbols. Opening movement power. Opening attack. Opening defense. And opening damage. So... Any of those, you do already know that, that she is a she from the H.G. Realms comments, and they're tanky, and they have opening invulnerability. I like I like set. I also like set number and rarity. Those two, I feel like, are pretty solid. I so I'd be say, cool if you of those. I'm going to go out on, on a limb and say most people wouldn't think of the Stones of Merlin outside of, like, the Fantastic Four set. But, I yeah, I think set narrows it down pretty good. Yeah. So. Going with set. The set is War of the Realms. Ah, good oh, thing. Geez. Um, <laughs> I know you guys both bought a lot of War of the Realms, so this should be yeah. a cakewalk for you guys. Is it Valkyrie? To... Okay, we have a guess for Valkyrie. I'm going to guess the only um, female from that set that I know has Invuln and say, uh, oh, gosh, Crusader. That's her name. The yeah. Okay. Ian is right. It is Valkyrie. So he will get two points for that one getting right. I don't think a Valkyrie has like a tanky character, but that's all right. I pulled all her right. in sealed, so that's why I went with her. <laughs> Third didn't figure in our game. last figure in modern. Okay. Oh, one, oh, 13, sorry. Okay. 13 is going to be opening movement power. This character has stealth. Just plain old stealth. Stealth top dial, yes. I think the girl who turns into Valkyrie has stealth top dial, but I don't know. Dr. Annabelle Riggs, I think. I don't know. Maybe I That don't sounds know. like it's right, but it could just be a completely different character. Um, I'll go with... So we've got a Conqueror. We've got King the Conqueror. We've got a Valkyrie. I don't know if we're going with like a, a Norse theme or something, like a Viking theme. Conquering Valkyries, I don't know. Or I'm just completely off base and it's something else entirely. Uh, I'll go with Black Widow. I don't know. That's a stealth thing. Okay. I think I will get Dr. Annabelle Riggs. Thank you, Simeon. Sounds good. I don't it is going to be neither of those. We need to go on clue number two for figure number three here. Seven? Seven is going to be generic keyword. This person is a spy. Oh, Ooh. A spy with stealth. So you're in the right boat. Unfortunately, spy master is rotated. Otherwise, it'd be, I mean, so obvious. Yeah. It's one of Car <laughs> Calder's favorite characters. Of course. Stealth and spy. Who the heck even has spy keyword? What sets had spies in them? I think Avengers Forever had a few. Because it had... Well, it had shield, I guess, which isn't necessarily spies. Um, I don't know if the character has stealth, but there was like the Red Widow from that set. So I'll, I'll go with Red Widow instead of Black Widow. Okay. Went for Red Widow. There's also oh, a man. Green I... Widow, I believe, if you want to triple down on it. There, there is. I am really drawing a blank on characters with stealth, <laughs> let alone the spy keyword. Uh, shield agent? How about that? <laughs> okay. It is sadly going to be neither of those. We get our third and final clue on figure number three. Maybe I even get a point this round. Fourteen. Fourteen is opening attack power. This character has precision strike. Ugh. That really, really narrows it down. Yeah, they don't put that on a lot of characters, so. They don't. They really don't. Spy, precision strike, stealth. This could be like a generic that I just completely forgot about. That's what I'm thinking too, man. What's a weird generic? is like, I don't think Maria Hill got it in Avengers Forever. Like, I know she, she probably has the spy keyword, but I don't think she had stealth top dial. Honestly, don't remember what she had. Um, spy. Was there any spies in Batman team up? Not that I can remember. Not off the top of my head. 
Uh, I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I'm. I'm really struggling thinking of anyone with stealth top tile. <laughs> in modern, yeah, <laughs> nothing here, man. Dude, I did a good job. I did a good job. You might have to think outside the box on this this figure. Is that a clue? Or, outside, or maybe inside uh, the box. Uh, uh, is it Kobic? She's not modern anymore. Is it? Well, we're not into golden age yet. <laughs> uh, Still spot modern. Yeah, have precision strike top dial. Never mind. He also doesn't have stealth top dial, so never mind. That's a horrible guess. Probably not a spy either. <laughs> Could um, be another. Another. Uh, ooh, is it. Uh, what's the lady legacy card from Captain America? Knight Mask? I don't know. No, she has this. a special top dial, I believe. I think she has phasing TK, actually. Okay. Eh, she seemed spyish. Say her name was Night Mask. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Close enough. Close enough. She goes to sleep. Her power. <laughs> she goes to sleep. It describes so the character. She wears a mask. Night. She works at night. Night Mask. Yeah. I'd be good at naming characters. I could write for a comic co- company. <sighs> you know, it's yeah. really funny because she doesn't wear a mask. But oh, it's okay. Well, I know it's not Nightshade because that's DC. I think. Or actually, maybe it is Nightshade, and I'm thinking... Um, yeah, I'm not thinking... Of, uh, I'll go with Sylvathi Vampire. Or Sel- oh, Sel- okay. Sylvathi yes. Vampire. They That's actually a pretty good guess, Sel- yeah. yeah. Uh, All right, Ian. I don't think they're spies, but... I, I don't even have a guess. Like, <laughs> I have nothing here. I'll just say, like, Hand Ninja? There's not even a modern okay. one. But that's, like, all that's coming to my mind. So there's my guess. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I will say you guys really fought for that one, and I'm happy to say that I get a point this round, and I'm very excited about it. So we are each, uh, we're all kind of tied here. I forget that we don't do whatever special points until the end, because this is the show. So this is the ultimate tiebreaker. Simeon got one, Ian got one, I got one. Calder. Yeah. Calder, who is the figure? The listener needs. Oh, to that's right. Sorry. Oh, I was getting ahead of myself. Yeah, this is Killmonger from Marvel Studios, Disney ah. Plus, specifically 108B from the starter set. Oh, oh. screw you. <laughs> I was going to say, starter I was going to say, Killmonger? he definitely doesn't have stealth. Like the Killmonger from the main set definitely doesn't have stealth top dial. He's got like charge or something. Oh, because oh, it was from, traded. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Nope. Stealth all right. strike, strike. So it's like that. All right. Yeah, uh, golden playing. Age figure is is one through ten. Okay. A little easier, hopefully. And still, anyone want to take a shot at theme for potentially point? So we've got Kang, Valkyrie, and Killmonger. Uh, Kang the Conqueror. You can always you can always Eric, wait the to do our Golden Age figure. Valkyrie the Valkyrie. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not even gonna take a stab at it. Okay. <laughs> All right, one through ten on the Golden Age fig here. First clue is ten. Hey, that is a free play. Uh, that just lets me remind everybody uh, about what you can do for Golden Age Bad Sam. So first thing is top dial things. And by top dial, I mean everything you can see on top of the black base that isn't the character's name. So things like uh, set number and symbol. Well, I'll describe the symbol to you and not necessarily give you the set. Uh, the special, you know, uh, range, team ability, point value, and then combat symbols. That's top dial things. Of course, we have HC Realms comment. We have set rarity and number. Okay, so never mind. I guess set rarity and number are not part of top dial things, and those are saved for that clue. Uh, one is back of the card. If this figure has a card, a lot of old characters had like a Wikipedia on their card, and I'll read that, but I'll take away any of their names. Uh, one is trait, special power, opening powers and stats, named and generic keywords. Those are what you can choose from. I like trait and special power. I'm good with that. Okay, so which one? Trait or a special power? Um, I will read. I will read the name of the trait and the text of the special power. You gotta be careful because this character might not have a trait, or they might not have a special power. It is Golden Age, so it's anything from not modern to Infinity Challenge. That's true. Hmm. Maybe we just go with set and number then. Okay, play it a little safer. All right, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. The set is the Justice League set. They are an uncommon in their rarity, or is sorry, set number is zero twenty one. The original Justice League set. Oh, so obvious, Colter. It's Jericho. 
Oh, okay, we have one for Jericho. I'll go with Aquaman. Ooh, and for Aquaman, it is going to be <laughs> neither of those. Clue like number Aquaman's two. Aquaman's always an uncommon. I don't know why. They do him dirty like that. He was a common in that set. Was he? Uh, four. Did him dirtier. Four? All right, uh, four. Is that right, Ian? Yep, four. Four is the uh, back of the card. Uh, let's just see how long it takes for someone to buzz in. And by that, I mean shout the person's name. Uh, all right. Son of the shark god, blank, is hunted in the waters Pink around shark. Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <Mountain> boy. <laughs> it, it, it is King Shark. Ian, you got it? All right, Simeon, you could potentially tie if you could guess the theme correctly. But if not, Ian wins Bad Samaritan. King Shark, Ooh. Kang the Conqueror. That was like the only thing to give him away, to Because he has no traits. He has no special powers. Maybe if you got keywords and I said Monster Suicide Squad or Team Ability, I guess Suicide Squad and yeah. I guess Fish. Like Fish Symbol Suicide Squad would have also maybe given it away. But straight up, it's like Son of the Shark God, blank, a.k.a. you know, King Shark. You know, it's like, wow, that's... Very obvious. Uh, is so yeah, bad movies. Ooh, is the theme bad movies? Is that your official guess for theme? That is my official guess. It is not specifically bad movies. So Simeon, you could maybe, maybe it's not specifically bad movies. It's is it recent bad movies? <laughs> um, is that your official guess? Is that wording exactly? <laughs> no, because we got we got Kang, who was in uh, Quantum Mania. Ant Man, Wasp, whatever that one was called. We have Valkyrie, who was in Love and Thunder. We have King Shark, who was in both Suicide Squads. Uh, no, he wasn't in the first one. So he's in the new Suicide Squad. I guess Squad. you count the animated one, sure. Oh, uh, sure. Um, and then we have. Who was the third character? Uh, Killmonger, who was. Killmonger. He did appear in. Black Panther. Okay, that was actually that was a good movie. I take it back, but I already said it, so. Say, <laughs> so I'm I'm guessing it's a character that appears. I was gonna say like you know like in the spirit realm or something, but that doesn't make sense for the other ones. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna say uh, they're not bad. They're not all bad guys. They're not all good guys. They don't really share a thing that I can think of. Okay. Um, well, I'll just yeah, go ahead and say what the theme is. I don't think you'll get it. I am disappointed in Ian as we do own three cups based off this movie. Uh, this is oh, none no! other than Creed 3. Oh, uh, King of the Conqueror, played by Jonathan Majors, who's in Creed 3. Killmonger, played by Michael B. Jordan, who's in Creed 3. Valkyrie, played by Tessa Thompson, who is in Creed 3. Although, ironically, not in Creed 3 is King Shark, who is played by Sylvester Stallone, but right. he's in the other two Creed movies, and I didn't know who any of the other actors were in Creed 3, so that's what we went with. That, that uh, although I did not get it correct, incredible theme. Incredible. Yeah, actually pretty, yeah, pretty Thank solid. You. If I had made the connection that you were thinking Sylvester Stallone, King Shark, instead of just thinking about the character King Shark, I might have got there, but... What else was Michael? B. <laughs> yeah, it was it was King Shark or Starhawk uh, were the two oh, Sylvester yeah. Stallone picks, and I was like, I don't know if they'll get Starhawk, like just think... as a figure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know who that is. He's in Guardians, obviously, but uh, he's like just like a tertiary role. He's the, I mean, he's Sylvester Stallone in the Guardians movies. <laughs> if you've recognized that's, that's him, basically it. he's the guy that like tells Yondu he's not allowed to be the, in like the Ravagers anymore. He's like. You'll never see the colors of blah 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 or whatever at your funeral. That's right. It's, yeah, it's, it has some line like that. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen those. Yeah, you broke. All right, guys, that is Bad Samaritan. Let us know if you had fun listening to it. Let us know if you want to see more Bad Samaritan in the future. But I think that basically wraps up this week's podcast. Yeah. Any last thoughts or anything, Ian? Uh, please consider. Coming and playing in the IPF tournament April 1st, Saturday. And please consider supporting it as well. We think it's a pretty cool initiative, and we'd love to have your support for that. So there are my closing statements. Yeah, definitely like and follow our Facebook page if you haven't already. We'll be doing a live stream at some point, similar to like the 400th episode live stream where we were doing challenges and giveaways the whole time. 
And then, like Ian said, April 1st, we'll have that tournament and more info to come. So if you are interested in all of that, then make sure to follow us. Uh, we'll also be, obviously, cross-posting it to Dial H. But um, you know where it won't get cross-posted, though? It's not going to be cross-posted on CoolStuffInc.com. Because that's the place where you go if you want all the newest HeroClick singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, attack them. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails. Bad segues. Hey.